Greetings everyone, Free here, welcome to the Demo Hub. So this demo, we're gonna take a look at the Snowflake data quality metrics and data quality functions uh, that allows you to build a very high fidelity instrumentation on your uh, data pipelines to check for uh, data quality metrics at a very high precision. Uh, everything from uh, unique counts, null values, duplicate records, your out of the box data metric checks, this will provide that for you. More importantly, you can also build custom uh, data quality and validation uh, metrics for observability into your pipelines. Now, as always, links to this will be in the description below. You can follow along step by step this uh, particular tutorial by checking out the tutorials.demohub.dev. And uh, for advanced analytics, you're going to see the lecture or the series around data quality and data metric functions uh, available in that. Again, links to this will be in the description uh, below. As a requirement for this, we need the sales DB. So I'm assuming you've set up the sales DB. If not, Go ahead, click on that link, copy the script. So this is the DB we use quite often. Essentially, all we need is just the tables with the sample records are inserted. You can skip the remainder of uh, databases for governance. It's not a big piece for this particular tutorial. To get this set up, it takes literally seconds. I have it set up here, but I'm going to recreate uh, the scripts to uh, give us a table and get uh, everything uh, inserted into that. While this is uh, coming and getting everything inserted, it's important to understand that the data set we work with has a number of issues. If we go into the, the database model, uh, take a look at um, the data set uh, being used, we would see uh, valid records, invalid emails coming in. This is an email record that is not valid, problematic from a data quality perspective. Uh, a record in here is missing first name. That could be really not good, missing home location. We have duplicate records that are also coming in. In this case, Ivy Taylor, that might be potentially some other tailor somewhere but here alice johnson has the same email but for some reason the name is different even though everything else for the most part look the same so is this alice johnson the same person we will find out from a data quality perspective and then if we look at the buyer information buyer data we have some value records no customer id very typical maybe the source system doesn't have the customer id and we want to resolve that still data invalid emails again uh, missing poster code, we don't have that. These are your everyday run-of-the-mill data quality issues that teams are struggling with. If you're not, then you're giving this data to your executives and they are the ones testing. I've heard somebody call this a test by executive, right, where they test and they complain about looking at the report with bad numbers and everybody's scrambling to fix that. We want to see how we can take care of this in the pipelines to ensure that uh, the executives are not the one doing testing for us. Now, all of the tables have been uh, created with the sample data needed uh, just to verify our customers. We have customers uh, loaded here with all the invalid records. Let's jump in with our data metric functions to see how Snowflake makes this uh, easy to set up a data metric function. Follow along the guide again. Uh, it explains what we're going to be testing here. In this test, we need a couple of uh, rows to, to work with. We will need to grant this access. This is optional, but just go ahead and run that. This access that's needed work for the data quality metric function. This is a basic test. I think most people can do this. So using the data metric function, which is part of the Snowflake core, no count. So if you go over to Snowflake, you have the core, you have the functions, you have this library of functions available here for doing uh, duplicate counts and freshness checks and a whole lot of other functions. This is where that's available. Do a uh, count for no values of first name. And if you do that, it complains that we don't have a database. Obviously, we need to set the right database for cost. And uh, do that one more time. In here, we have one null value, or one null count. Do a unique, eight unique records in, in the table. Uh, based on first name, uh, duplicate records. We do have one duplicate record. It's finding that, again, based on email, uh, because Alice that we saw was a duplicate. And looking at the freshness of this uh, data, how long ago was this data refreshed? We can see about X amount of minutes ago, this was, was refreshed. Does give you freshness of your, of your data. Now, these are basic run-of-the-mill tests, but more likely than not, you're going to want to have your own custom validations, your own custom checks. This is where the data metric function comes into play at a very powerful level. Copy the script. Let's explore what we have going on here. In this case, we're going to create two custom checks. One, which is just checking for freshness. Uh, the checks are pretty dynamic. It takes an aggregation, which is um, um, your time dimension, and then it, it applies the checks based on that create That check to check for freshness by the hour create a custom check to count for invalid emails, not just telling us 
how many emails we have, but how many invalid emails we have. Now, email addresses are pretty standard. We're using RegEx here as an example. You can imagine instead of doing email addresses, you might be checking for your customer that they have a valid customer ID. And the way your organization stores its customer ID, the format of what that is, is maybe unique to you. That uniqueness is what you would include as, as part of your check in here. Uh, or how your products are identified, what is your product queue looks like, right? You can use that as part of a check to ensure that the skew numbers that are used for analytics meets your check. Just a, a basic explanation there. We call this invalid email counts, and then we're going to call this invalid stage count. Depending on the opportunities we're working with, we're creating this data metric function to check that are the opportunities in the right stage. And if an opportunity is in the wrong stage, we're going to complain about that. The allowed stages for opportunities is prospecting, qualifications, proposal, negotiations, close one, close loss. This is going to look at the opportunity table that we had and tell us, just to give you an idea, we have this, we have this opportunities table that holds the opportunities. There is a column that should tell us the stage for the opportunity. And these are the valid stages. At some point, we should see an invalid stage. If for something like this, we don't want an opportunity in the table with an invalid stage, essentially. That's what we're trying to get at with this uh, particular check. Now, when you create your checks, uh, the checks are pretty dynamic. You're not creating a check based on a specific table. The, the syntax for that is you, you pass in a table, you pass in the columns that you want for the check, and so the check is pretty dynamic. Now, once you have these checks, then you can apply that on particular tables in a very dynamic fashion. That's that. Let's recreate that. I'm not sure if we created that already. Let's create one more check here to check for composite duplicate accounts. I'm checking for duplicates, not just duplicate count across, say, uh, emails. Do we have duplicate emails? But I want to check uh, combining emails and first name. Do we have a duplicate? Or I want to take first name and last name, combine that, and then check do we have a duplicate across that? Because sometimes your duplicate might not necessarily be in one column, but across columns you could identify uh, potential duplicates. Just a couple of scenarios here. Not very creative, but hopefully this gives you an idea of uh, the types of checks you might be looking at. These are things that people are running today, maybe creating custom checks and manually running. Think about how do you have that run as part of the data metric function. With our checks are created, we can go and begin testing those, those checks with a couple of statements. We're not using out-of-the-box checks anymore as before. In this case, we're using the custom checks we've created. Invalid email count was what we created. You simply give the function name, and that's the syntax, and then you pass in a table. These checks do take tables. They don't take like specific individual columns so the table is so you select emails this is the the interior and we're passing that into this function these are essentially table functions if you would say once this runs it checks and it should tell us if there are invalid emails run this it tells us there's one invalid email all right we do the same for stages we have one invalid stage if you remember with this we had an invalid stage everything else was within the checks that we had and this can surface that for you uh, now it doesn't give you the specific record. It just tells you that there is an invalid check. And you still have to go in and take a look at uh, what the specific records are, if that's your requirement. Now, once you have your data metric functions, a good idea might always be to uh, set that up uh, on a cron or on a task to uh, be automated. As data is coming in every, say, five minutes, you want to run your checks because data quality is not a one and done thing, right? Typically, you always want to, I call it like taking a shower. Or just because you took a shower yesterday doesn't mean you don't take a shower today, right? It's something you got to do every single day, if not twice a day. So uh, really important to, to have this. Now, for automating the data quality checks, here I'm going to alter table, set uh, the data metric uh, schedule. To make the checks run on a particular table, it's important to have your schedule first. Before we created the data quality metrics, they are just hanging in the air. We don't have that automated. Now we've created the schedule. We're attaching, the, we're setting the schedule to the table. So right now we have a schedule set to our customer table. This is our customer table now has a schedule set to it. And this means every five minutes it should run the checks. Otherwise, if you don't want to go by five minutes, you can also go by cron and use some very complex cron uh, syntax in there. But once you have that set, uh, next is to uh, do a, a trigger on that. You can set um, that if you don't want it to go by Chrome, you can set it to trigger on changes. If any changes to the table, it will automatically trigger. There's a couple of options to, to trigger that. But for now, let's do it every five minutes as before. Now, once that is set, uh, the table has the schedule. Now we want to attach the actual data metric function to the table. So again, steps are you have a table, you create your custom data metric function, you attach a schedule to the table, 
you attach the custom data metric function to that table. Those are the steps. Essentially, what we're doing here step by step. Now we want to alter customer table at data metric function. And this is a custom function we created from above. Go ahead, add that to the table. You can add that to customers, uh, as many data metric functions as you want. Let's add every single data metric function into that, uh, if, including the one for freshness. Well, these are the core ones. You can also add your custom ones to as well. Now, once you've added these checks to the table, now everything should be running because every five minutes it should do a check and generate the results for us. There are a couple of ways you can visualize the results. One would be there is a table where those results get persisted because usually you're not going to be seeing that on the screen. You want that stored somewhere and trended over time. There is a snowflake, the local data quality monitoring results. This is where everything gets stored and you can query that to uh, visualize your data quality uh, trending over time. Here there is a schedule, when it, uh, what the schedule is, uh, the measurement time, uh, the table ID, what table did this run against, the name of the table, customers, I've done this a couple of times, what the metric ID was, the name of the metric, was it custom or was it core or, or the schema? Depending on the schema, you know if it's custom or core. Because if it's core, then it's out of the box. If it's custom, obviously, if it's anything other than core, then it must have been a custom metric. What the arguments were, as well as a reference ID and then the values. This is the count. If you had uh, emails, distinct emails, this would be the, the count of that. Uh, this is essentially the table that gives us uh, all the results that are needed. Uh, that's one way to view it. If you want to go into a specific database or a specific schema, you can do that too as well. Here, I just want to see my data metrics results for just the customer table and the spec this specific metrics. And you can see the number of issues and or you can see the counts and then you can see maybe number of failures. Now, there are more ways you can even zero in on specific metrics depending on how complex your instrumentation is. You might not always want to see everything. You can always go into uh, specific uh, individual metrics and uh, looking at specific schemas. And uh, here, invalid email counts is what we care about. With this, you can see the value over time. It's not changing, which is good. You don't want it changing too much, right? Because every time it runs, it just does a count and checks. If it changes, then you'll see that trending over time. Now, I think I'm just really keeping this um, simple. You can do more checks where you do look at the date. And then you sum the count over time for more trending. In this case, um, uh, these are the dates we've been uh, running the checks. I think the one for today should hopefully run pretty soon. These are the counts we've been having over time based on this uh, check. If you want, in the, you can grab it. You can see it started. We had a spike and then it goes down. Not the most pretty chart, but just to give you an idea. I, I think I'll show you a more interesting chart here, which will be uh, using Streamlit. So we can take Streamlit, query that table, and hopefully uh, see um, a more a better visualization. Here's the visualization we might want to get to. So just, this is a very basic Streamlit app. Uh, anyone can can try it uh, with this app. You might just have to wait a few seconds for the job to actually run because we have this schedule for every five minutes uh, for that to run. Everything should be there. And then also you can also come in for folks who might be curious how does this cost or what does this cost in terms of credit. You can see what credits this use because it's a job obviously is running there will be some credits associated with that, but it's very transparent. Uh, here you're looking at account usage, data quality metric, uh, monitoring usage history, and this should give you, because my job hasn't kicked in yet, which is why I'm seeing, I'm not seeing any results, but this should give you visibility to uh, how much credit is being used for data quality. Now, justifying the value for this is really up to you, your use case, right? Because what is the cost of having good data quality and instrumentation in your pipelines and paying for that credit as opposed to not having it? And then having to deal with sending an emails to uh, bad email addresses because everything in your database is null or running ineffective marketing campaigns because you don't have the right data quality in your pipelines or uh, making uh, critical business decisions based on invalid sales numbers because the sales values are out of range or we're working with stale data. What is the value for not having that? Does it justify with, with, with the cost uh, that comes in from here? But hopefully this was helpful to you as always. Do check out the links uh, for more details. Uh, I will share here in the description. This has been Fru with Demo Hub. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. Uh, like this, share this with somebody that might get value out of it. And I'll see you in the next demo.